Welcome to the Thriving Solopreneur Show, where you learn the stories and systems that have turned hardworking, self-employed business owners like yourself into highly successful, leisurely entrepreneurs. This show is dedicated to those who went into business for themselves because they had an idea or suggestion that ignited their passions to do more, to do it better, and to solve a problem in our community. Whether your business started in a basement, a garage, or at a kitchen table, this episode will bring to you a system, a tip, or an entrepreneur that has been where you are and can guide you to living the fulfilling life you desire for yourself. Here's your host and serial solopreneur, Janine Bolin. This is Janine Bolin with the Thriving Solopreneurs podcast program, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're busy, so we have a guest here who is loaded with content, and she is more than happy to give you wonderful tools and tips to help you out. So lucky for us, we have Dr. Nancy Zare, a psychologist and strategist. She works with entrepreneurs who feel awkward in starting sales conversations, following up and handling the necessary, you know, questions, objections, all that kind of stuff, asking to get hired, all these things that we go through as solopreneurs. She helps that folks like us feel comfortable and poised and be able to sell with confidence and get new business, get new clients through the door. So basically we can go on staying in business. She's accredited in sales training and adult learning, and Nancy turns education basically into <laughs> edutainment, you know, entertainment, edutainment. Her secret desire is to go racing on the Autobahn and be ready to laugh, think, share, and be wowed as she drives home the idea of how buyers buy and how we best can handle that through relationship marketing. So thank you so much for being with us today, Nancy. Oh, thank you, Janine, for inviting me. I'm excited to talk with you and your audience. Well, thank you. Great. Okay, so for starters, solopreneurs kind of wear 35 different hats on any given day. And so some folks, when they first start their own business, are just kind of shell-shocked at the fact of, oh, wait, now I have to go out and get clients. Well, I just want to do my job, right? You know, they think, I just want to sit on my Zoom meeting, and I just want to help people. Don't don't ask me to go out and sell. I don't like selling. I hate selling. So kind of walk us through some of the ways that we can, quote, quote, sell without selling, you know, because I know you're a professional at this. I, I am uh, enjoying your remarks because I was speaking earlier today with somebody who is exactly in that situation. He's been in business a whole five or six months. Uh, and as a result, uh, he is finding out that he's a videographer and he loves, of course, the uh, activity of being a videographer. But we both agreed that he's actually in the marketing business of videography and not in the videography business. And do you see the difference? And that's exactly what I think you're saying. Those 35 plus hats that people are wearing, uh, they boil down to the fact that we are have to structure our business in order to stay in doing the business that we love to do. It helps to have the cash coming inside so that we can pay the mortgage and make sure that our kids get to college and that we can <laughs> take care of the car when it breaks down. So, And then as solopreneurs, we also have the added thing of we also have to pay our own taxes and we have to invest in our own IRAs and stuff like that. So as we move through all of that understanding, as if there wasn't enough pressure just to run your, <laughs> your own business. You also have other things. So talk to us a little bit about how people can go about incorporating prospecting, selling, and relationship marketing into their business. Love to hear your thoughts on that. Good. Well, first of all, I'd like to suggest that uh, selling has many definitions, and the one that I like to use is influence. And in, if you think of selling as influencing somebody's behavior to take action, it's very different than perhaps the stereotype that we have of manipulating somebody, perhaps being a little sleazy or phony about our offers and what we're doing. And my guess is that you and your audience are fed up with that kind of a person. We don't want to be that person. We don't want to interact with that person. And the good news is you don't. That today, forming a relationship, having a genuine 
uh, bond and connection that you establish with another person is the best way to sell, um, to influence people. So I, I just want to make that point and maybe hammer it in. We do not have to think of ourselves in that desperate mode of selling. And, and yet at the same time, Janine, as Mary Kay says, nothing happens in business until something, someone sells something. So it is important that we, of course, bring in revenues for the services we offer. So, all right. So we're a new entrepreneur, uh, solopreneur, entrepreneur, and uh, we're six months into business and we realize that, you know, we have the one client that we thought would really be there for us and that has disappeared. And now we find ourselves in panic mode because all of a sudden what we thought was our cash cow has gone the way of the dodo. So what are some steps a, a young <laughs> solopreneur can take to move into that relationship marketing aspect? So we must always be in the business of forming relationships and never think that it's all about delivering services. In fact, about 30, 35% of time should be invested in marketing, which means developing relationships. Now, I know Janine and I have a very special way that we love to work with people and to develop that relationship, and that is by sending cards. Turns out that cards have 100% open rate. And so if you're looking to stay top of mind, make a good impression, be outstanding, then this is a tool that I highly recommend for my clients. It's a tool for starting conversations, for following up, and for, like I say, continuing to build that relationship. One of the things that I love most about being able to use direct mail marketing is the fact that it's an easy form of follow-up. It's not invasive. My email isn't getting lost in the piles of emails that people have to sort through. And I'm not calling people on the phone as much as I used to. I, it's a lot more fun for me to be able to uh, send cards. So no matter what service you use, I highly encourage you as soon as possible to start thinking about direct mail options. And Nancy uh, would be happy to chat with you about that because she has this amazing book called Compelling selling. And it's not what you think. It's not like you, she said, uh, I have to reiterate, definitely not the, the sleazy and trying to get somebody to buy something that is not in their best, highest and best good. Most of the solopreneurs that are listening to this show actually have pretty big hearts, very generous people. And you would never want a client that isn't going to be best served by your affiliation with them. And so moving forward with that book, talk to us a little bit about why, why did you, why did you write the book? You know, what, what's going on with you that you decided to write this amazing book called Compelling Selling? Well, I realized some time ago, Janine, that one of the most effective ways to build relationships is based on the platinum rule. Now I'm sure that you and others are familiar with the golden rule. Treat other people the way I want to be treated, which is a very humane approach. The Platinum Rule, which is a book, by the way, by uh, Tony Alessandro is the author. When I read that book, it totally aligned with my values because the Platinum Rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. And when I put myself in the shoes of the other person and I communicate using the kinds of words, values, the things that are important to them, there are some amazing benefits that take place. One, the individual relaxes and gets comfortable because they say to themselves, wow, you get me, we're alike. Secondly, sales resistance, we all have sales resistance, falls away because you're not trying to sell them. People don't want to be sold, but they do like to buy. Instead, you're having a conversation and developing a relationship. And that allows trust to build. And people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So the platinum rule, treat others the way they want to be treated, to me, that's the secret sauce for how to develop relationships quickly and authentically. We hear that a lot, you know, be your authentic self, be your authentic self. And there are times when I woke up at 2.30 in the morning with a, with a cold sweat because I had no idea what the next 
contract was going to come from and all that. And if I were going to be perfectly authentic, when I was calling my prospects, trying to get revenue brought into my company, it was basically send me money. I want to make sure I can pay the mortgage or, you know, something along those lines, (laughs) if I were going to be truly authentic. Talk to us a little bit about when you're prospecting and you're on the phone with people and you know, you need cash, they know you need cash, but you want to make sure you're in harmony with each other on that. How do you go about doing that without coming off as one needy, you know, uh, scrapping for the last available dollar? You know, how do you go about doing that with people? So it turns out, Janine, that people come in four flavors. And I'm sure some of your listeners are familiar with DISC or Myers-Briggs, or there are, turns out there are 200 different personality systems, including birds, dogs, fish, objects, colors. Uh, I happen to subscribe to the understanding that there are four different personality styles. And these are people that make buying decisions and have values that are quite different from one another. And what I help my clients to do is understand those differences and then to speak the language of the prospect. So in the situation that you just described where, quote, I, I really am looking for the sale because my family depends upon it, uh, this is, again, you need to know to whom you're speaking. If it's, I, I label these buyers, by the way, or these decision makers, two, four, six, and eight. And those numbers represent the number of contacts needed for somebody to make a buying decision. So obviously the number two buyer is very fast. They need only one or two contacts, whereas the number eight buyer is obviously much slower. If you're talking with somebody who is uh, wants relationships, you can be very transparent. This is your number four buyer, very transparent. And they actually, if they feel the connection and they feel the bond, they may go ahead and make that purchase because truly they care for you and want to see you thrive. So it depends on to whom you're speaking. You wouldn't say that to the number two buyer because they could care less. The number six buyer would find that an invasion of privacy to hear anything about your personal situation. And the number eight buyer is way too logical and way too methodical to go down that path. So it matters to whom you're speaking. I agree with that. And and I think one of the things that you and I both uh, share with our with our communities is that it's best to get out ahead of it before, before that wonderful cash cow leaves, you need to be marketing every day or at least set aside two to three hours a week where all you're doing is getting on the phone and connecting with people that you haven't connected in with a long time. You know, you need to be chatting it up with a client that maybe you helped out three years ago and you haven't talked since then, just chat with them, you know, say, Hey, what's going on? So you survived 2021 or 2020 how's, how's life, you know, just find out what's happening. So in those kind of things, when we really focus, instead of waiting until you're in dire straits to start marketing (laughs) as we reach out and get out ahead of it. What are some ways to break the ice? I mean, I have my scripts. I know what I do when I want to break the ice with somebody and get to know them a little bit better, but what do you recommend in your books and with your clients on how to get on the phone or how to start messaging somebody to reestablish a connection that's, you know, gone from, you know, very hot to warm or, you know, you're feeling (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate where you're coming from. And, and again, it goes back to what I just said about understanding to whom you're speaking. Because if you're speaking to the number two person, that person's very fast. They're very transactional. They're not about relationships particularly. And with that person, you can actually just get on the phone and say, hey, you know, I have this amazing opportunity. Would you like to join me? And guess what? They may just say yes without any more details. Whereas, you know, again, that number two, that number four person who's much more of a heart to heart, which is going to pair up very nicely with the majority of your listening audience with this person, you just really want to 
I'm going to use the word schmooze. You want to, you know, have a conversation that's much more personal. And so hence that question of, you know, how are things going for you? I mean, really tell me honestly, how, you know, how did last year go and where are you at now? And how is this affecting your family or your business or whatever? And because this person wants to share and connect in that heart space. The number six buyer, it's a lot more formal. And with this case, you really kind of uh, want to ask in a more general way, you know, how are things going? Uh, what are your current challenges? And keep it on a kind of much more, um, I'm going to use the word kind of superficial or business plane. I don't mean superficial in a negative way, but you, you don't want to get into a deep personal conversation with that number six buyer. And the number eight person, honestly, chit chat drives them nuts. So you you really don't want to do chit chat with the number eight, but you do want to find out, hey, what's your latest thoughts on? Notice I use the word thoughts on because this is a thinker. This is a reader. This is a person who's constantly absorbing new information. And you might actually ask them, hey, something just new came out. And I was wondering if you'd already done your homework on it because there's a good chance they have. Yeah, they spend time self-educating. So one of the things that I absolutely love about the direct mail program, whether you use send out cards or whatever kind of program, is that you're doing all those connection points and you're not having to actively be on the phone. But you do need to make sure that you are sending cards, you're using follow up with people. So, okay, so I'm a solopreneur and I really want to expand my business and I really want to get better at what I do as far as conversations. You know, my cash flow is starting to stabilize for me. So I'm wanting to move to the next level. So how can a Dr. Nancy Zare type person be able to help me expand? It's about identifying style even before you do any prospecting. One of the things I teach my clients is how to go on social media, look somebody up on LinkedIn, Facebook their website and identify the style based upon their posts, their photos, uh, and, and that sort of thing, what platforms they use. And so again, if you're expanding and you want to upscale your business that way, uh, one of the things to do is to take the social media that you're already connected with, the tools that you already know, and begin to apply identifying which of those people are going to make good prospects for your business. And again, it's about developing a relationship. One of the things I dislike the most is when somebody reaches out to friend me or to have become a link on, uh, face, on LinkedIn, and then it, the immediate message that follows is, well, I think I could help you with XYZ situation. They don't know that I even have a need. And one of the things that is that you have to do in sales is you have to establish that a person actually has a need or desire for your service or product and not assume but because they're in a particular demographic category or they have a particular kind of business that that automatically qualifies them. It does not. I have, I think we've all experienced that where, you know, we connect with somebody because we look at their profile and we're like, oh yeah, that's somebody that I think I could collaborate with. You know, that's kind of my attitude is like, I have four podcast programs. I got all these online events that I run and stuff. And I'm like, I'm always looking for collaborators. And one of the things that happens is I'm, I'm trying to collaborate with them and here they are selling me and selling hard, you know? And I'm like, whoa, that went out with 1950s when the 1960s went <laughs> And yeah, we're kind of done with that. And people are still catching up to that. So, okay, you've got YouTube videos, you have all kinds of stuff that people can kind of get to know you a little bit better. What do you recommend? Somebody wants to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, of course, you know, buy your book. I highly recommend it. It's a very good read. It's very well thought out, easy to follow. Uh, but how else can somebody get to know you a little bit better? 
Well, uh, obviously, I am on all the social media platforms, so come and say hi. Be- and let me know that we met through Janine's, uh, co- you know, podcast, because I will, you know, wrap my arms around you, so to speak, right. assuming that, that it's the right style. Okay, so <laughs> those of you who are the six and eights, I promise I will not assault you physically, uh, you know, et cetera. But, you know, for those of you who are, are warm and want to connect that way, yes, um, I, I don't bite and uh, we can have a great conversation. And just like Janine, um, I'm known for being a great connector. I love to help people meet other people that can help them with their own business and help them go forward. Uh, so, you know, say hi, because you never know what goodies await with each person. Yeah, it's it's really true, because there are so many times where I was thinking that I could help someone else. And what ended up happening is we did a collaborative project and we were able to totally synergistically expand both of our outreach to such a point. It was, it was brilliant. So yeah, go ahead and give Dr. Nancy Zare a opportunity to just chat with you because I promise she won't bite. Oh, and she's like me. We both detest being stuffed into a funnel and then being sold to. I promise you, she will not do that. If you sign up for something free from her or you connect with her, you are not going to be slapped into some sort of uh, machine that you can't get out of. I don't know if, am I the only one that feels like I get, you know, thrown into a rubber room? (laughs) When I get sucked into a funnel. <laughs> yeah, I no, I, I don't like that either. And I was just thinking that if any of your listeners are on Facebook, I have a free uh, Facebook group, a private group called Relationship Builders. Surprise, surprise. It ends in a Z, by the way, uh, the builders because of Zare. So Relationship Builders for Sales Success. And it's all about creating relationships. And I like to interview uh, members of my group and highlight them to one another and encourage people to do business with each other within the group. So that might be an excellent opportunity for some of your listeners, both to get to know me, as well as to benefit from, again, the resources that I offer. Yeah, most definitely. I highly recommend that people get into as many different communities as you can, because not only can you support them, but they will reach around and support you. So definitely uh, check out the Facebook group. Well, Nancy, anything else you want to share with people that we haven't covered? Because, you know, there's a million and one things you and I could talk about for hours, but what would you like to share with us today before we go? The most important thing I want to share, and it comes deep from my heart, is that we tell ourselves stories. Now, there are stories that can empower you, and there are stories that unfortunately can pull you down. What story are you telling yourself? And every day we wake up, we have a chance to tell a new story. You don't have to be held to the story you told yesterday or the day before. So I urge you today and tomorrow and going forward to tell yourself empowering, uplifting stories, stories that feature you going forward with confidence, with poise, with an open heart to help the people of this world. And let your gifts shine. Tell a better story. Dr. Nancy Zare, a psychologist and strategist, especially catering to entrepreneurs who feel a little awkward starting sales conversations. So thank you very much for your time today, Dr. Zare. I hope you have a fabulous 2021. As you, Janine, and to all the listeners, to your sales success. And this is Janine Bolin with the Thriving Solopreneur Podcast Show. Do stay tuned. We post every Friday. We have a new guest. And if you like one of my guests, please let me know so that I can have them back on. These people have a lot of excellent tips between their ears. They carry it around with them. And sometimes they just have so much there, they forget to tell us unless we ask the right questions. So definitely reach out to us and stay strong, stay steady. And keep working your business. America is stronger having you working your business than giving up. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for listening to the Thriving Solopreneur Show. We hope you found this episode helpful and uplifting. Be sure to visit us at JanineBolin.com forward slash podcast, where you'll find a library of videos, books, and podcast programs to guide you to the future you envision for yourself. We also ask that you visit our sponsor, the8gates.com. 
for the books and online courses that share with you the debt-free living lifestyle that allows business owners like yourself to flourish. Have a great day and see you next time.